Wow, can you believe six months of hammer on this bike and not once have we even considered having a look at the motor. But today we're going to be ripping the motor out of this specialised level, having a quick butchers and giving it a bit of love. First up, safety first, you're going to watch you don't bang your head on the handlebars, but ultimately it's battery out so that the sensor or the motor doesn't activate and take your fingers off if it starts up. So first up, a nice easy job, cranks off, 8mm Allen key. Now they've got self-extracting nuts, anti-clockwise, so in theory this is an easy job, but this is one I prepared earlier. I've already been sweating to get this off, so last few turns and she's off. So it should, uh, yeah, don't be con too concerned if it's a little bit stiff. Now at this point, remember, it's just the drive side crank you're taking off because it's worth leaving the non-drive side crank on to help you get a bit of purchase when you're actually taking that spider off. Next up, castle nut remover and an adjustable spanner or a 32 mil spanner if you can afford one, but I really like the adjustable, one of my favorite tools in the box. Simply slot that on there and drop the spanner on. And remember, the non-drive side crank is there to help you loosen that castle nut in there, easy. So remember, eight mil Allen key on the non-drive side cranks as well, and they can be a bit stiff, so expect to do a bit of sweating first time. Right, we're going to start off with the drive side of this bike and the first job to do is simply take off the chain guide. That's a four millimeter Allen key and off she comes. So here you can see we've got the bros top nut in place. Uh, the crank puller is located behind the spider. So I must point out I should have taken the chain off before I started this, but simply you've got a 13 millimeter clockwise and just be careful. They do tend to pop sometimes, but that's quite normal. Now, once you've got the chain ring and the spider out, it's a good opportunity to check for any wear on this item, particularly the teeth or on the splines which locate onto the bottom bracket there, because that really needs to sit tightly onto that bottom bracket. So you need to clean away any dirt or grit that's in that particular area. So remember, we're still working on the drive side here. We're going to move on to the non-drive side later, and that's where actually the leads and the terminals are on the motor. So yeah, simply just get pop this drive side cover off, make sure you don't drop the 3mm bolts, it's a 3mm Allen key. So that's actually pretty impressive, and remember these are not watertight guards, they're simply seals to keep all that muck and dirt away from the motor. So that's the drive side done for now, uh, let's move to the other side of the bike, and like I said that's where the leads and the terminals on this motor are. So here we are on the non-drive side and getting again 3mm Allen key to get the cover bolts off. At this point, you might be wondering, oh my God, the motor's gonna fall on the floor, but don't worry about that. The bolts, the main bolts are still in place holding that motor there. Don't worry, need to worry about that till later on. So here you have the battery lead, the speed sensor, and the remote. So that's really satisfying to get the cover off the non-drive side of this lever and to find that it's actually pretty clean inside. So the first job to do is to dismount the battery lead and that's simply a three millimeter allen key and then you take the lead off and remember when you pull in the lead off these motors you do it by the connector and not by the leader otherwise you just simply pull it out so there you go there's the terminal and you can see it's absolutely dry as a bone and that's after six months use so the really are quite watertight these units on this bike. So there you go, there's the battery lead, so I'm gonna uh, tackle that, I'll give it a bit of a clean in a minute. And then you've also got the uh, sensor and the remote leads there at the front. So at this point, actually it might be worth taking a shot on your phone just to remember where those leads go. So I'm now just pulling out the speed sensor and the remote. Now there are four main bolts which hold the motor in place on the specialized level and this is quite different from the Canevo which has actually got a cradle which is part of the frame and you pull the motor out sideways. Now you need to be really careful that you hold the motor and the cradle in place with the level so that it doesn't drop onto the floor. And you do this by systematically doing the two at the front and then carefully undoing the one at the rear which connects the main frame to the chain stay on the bike. So once you've taken those bolts out, and remember that there's a few washers there, wash they don't drop on the floor. So there's the motor out of the Levo, and it's actually incredibly clean for six months old. But as I said, we didn't actually need to take it out, but we thought we would do for the hell of it. And as you can see, there's still a part of the cradle left on this motor, and it just shows where the heat transfer pads are located between the motor and that cradle, because that's designed to dissipate heat 
through the chassis and not through the motor on this bike. So once you've got it out, make sure to clean around the uh, where the spider goes because you want that to be located really tight on there, not misaligned. Now what really is worth doing is once you've got the motor out, have a look inside those ports there for any grey residue which is a sign of any corrosion or arcing which actually might affect the motor further down the line. If you do want to take the cradle off, it's simply a matter of these 13 millimeter nuts here. Remember it's not, not the bolts, it's simply the, the nuts come off and they're serrated so they hold the motor onto that cradle. So you're going to be asking how often should you be cleaning this motor? Well I reckon between three and six months and if you're not confident about doing it yourself simply pop it down your local dealer and it's a job that can take about 30 minutes so it's not going to cost a huge amount of money. Key thing is once you if you decide to take the motor out there's a sticker there that says do not open and these units are actually sealed for life. Yeah you did hear me right there. The only thing that needs replacing or servicing in this motor is the belt drive and that is good for nine and a half thousand miles so I reckon that motor is going to outlive you. Before the motor goes back in make sure you get the chain guide back in there so it's in place when you come to put in the drive side covers back on. Now I just want to rewind you to where we were a few minutes ago when the motor was still in the chassis. Now it's a big move actually taking this bolt out which connects the front triangle to the rear chainstay. If you take that out, getting the motor back in can actually be quite fiddly. So you need to maybe question whether you need to drop it out in the first place because you can actually access all the main ports there and the heat transfer shield which are the key parts of the motor. So yeah, we've got it back in and uh, the, 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 that bolt there which connects the front triangle to the chainstay is the first one you need to slot in place. And remember there's two washers each side of that chainstay which need to be located in place otherwise you're gonna have a loose back end of your bike. Now some words of wisdom here, be really careful especially when you're locating this bolt at the top of the motor because the threads are really fine on it and it's easy to cross thread that so that's something you need to take especially good care of when you're putting the motor back in. So before popping the terminals back onto the motor a little bit of contact cleaner there to prevent any further erosion but specialists actually recommend a corrosion block on these terminals before you put it back in if you're doing some maintenance on your motor. And like I mentioned earlier the main battery lead uh, don't forget to check that again for any uh, any wear on it and like I said uh, this is magnetized so make sure there's no swarf got into the little ports on your plug there. When you're putting the main battery lead back onto the motor, be careful when you're tightening the cable uh, bolt there. Make sure it doesn't pinch the actual lead because that can cause uh, miscommunication between the battery and the motor. So you've cleaned the cases up. One final thing to do, put a little bit of grease on the top of the covers where they connect with the frame so that if there's any flex in the frame then there's not gonna be any creaking from this part of the bike. So when you're nipping these up with a 3mm allen key, watch you don't over tighten them because they easily crack the casing on this non-drive side. So just before you finish with the non-drive side, make sure there's not any protrusions, make sure everything's in line, all the cables, no pinching of the cables, and you're good to go to the other side of the bike. So next job, you've got the side casings onto the motor. Uh, get the chain ring and spider back on there. Remember, it's a tapered fit, so there's no need for any grease. On she goes. Next up is the castle nut clockwise. So don't forget to put a bit of grease on the splines before you reinstall your drive side crank arm. Uh, again obviously make sure that both the cranks are facing opposite directions otherwise you won't be going anywhere. And then just simply tighten that up and once you've done that Make sure you realign your chain guide. So motor's back in, cranks are on, chain guide's in place. Uh, before you put the battery back in, check all the cables on the down tube are located correctly. Otherwise that can be quite irritating having a rattle from that area. Have a look at the battery. If there's any faint or flickering lights up on the LED display, uh, could, be, could be that there's water got in the system there. And um, simple answer there is take it to your dealer and usually they can turn that around in about a day. 
So before you pop the battery back in, give it a quick clean. Uh, just bear in mind that uh, the locator is rubberized. So have a look, there's no perishing in that area. If there is, you can easily get quick replacement parts for that part of the battery. And it's actually chamfered and it only fits in one way. So only one thing left to do and that's get plugger back in, fire her up, check the walk assist's working. Oh, look at that beauty. Fantastic. Oh, I love it. That was actually pretty simple, but you know what? I don't think we actually needed to drop the motor out on this bike. After six months use, it was still actually really clean in there. So a top tip would be just to drop it down and get the locating terminals cleaned up and check for any wear, any cracks or any kind of ingress of mud and dirt in that area. Remember that the turbo levo is a different process from removing the battery to the Canevo, which is a lot simpler because there's actually a cradle as part of the down tube on that bike. And all you have to do with the Canevo is slide the motor out. And there you go. It's as simple as that, really. Uh, it probably takes about half an hour. Um, what I will point out is that we focused on the motor and the battery on this bike, but it's simply one part of the system. And what you need to make sure is you check everything on your e-bike from the wheels, the brake pads, the suspension, to the nuts and bolts. The motor and battery is simply one part of the system. So there you go. I thoroughly enjoyed a quick look at my turbo lever motor. Um, if you want to see some more e-bike videos, make sure to get out of the workshop. And there's a great one on the Bosch EMTB Challenge Guard, as you can find here. Uh, 1000 for Dead with Georgia Leslie. Uh, that's a great video, which is a hill climb downhill challenge. That can be found there. Please give us a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to EMBN if you've not already done so.